Hello, everybody. Um, I'm more used to presenting on mass spectrometry, like what Rhonda presented on. But today, I'm going to um, ease myself into this subject of micro sampling, um, which is usually um, before uh, mass spectrometry. And I'm going to talk about two novel approaches um, <clears throat> uh, of how we can do this, hopefully addressing some of the problems that have been highlighted by the previous speakers um, earlier today. <clears throat> so I've got a limited history with uh, micro sampling. And the first time I encountered this was when I was looking at endogenous metabolites in plasma, um, <clears throat> things like vitamin Ds, um, steroid hormones. And I was asked to look at these on dried blood spots on paper. And um, when I started to look into this, I found that I couldn't get uniform dispersions of blood. I couldn't get uh, internal standard uniformity when I spiked internal standard onto the card. I couldn't punch the cards very well. I didn't have an excellent machine like what the last presenter uh, just, just showed. I was doing it by hand. And um, I was re really thought there was a need for normalization of the compounds of interest with, compared to something endogenous in the sample. And I couldn't really find an easy, easy way to do normalization. So when I looked at the challenge, I made a conclusion that I had no confidence in my quantitative results. Because the brief for this project was absolute quantitation with a perfect correlation towards a plasma sample. I decided after some trial and error, it was pretty much impossible. And this was confirmed last night when I was talking to somebody and they said how lucky they were when they got a plasma sample rather than a dried blood spot. And I think just about everybody in the room agrees that, right? That um, <laughs> plasma is pretty straightforward. Dried blood spots are difficult. And the, the story and the complexity changes quite a lot. And I guess this comes from my metabolomics work. That when you take a sample out of the system, from the in vivo to the in vitro, the dynamics of that system changes. And you can get lots of different enzymatic effects and changes in, in what you'll measure. And remember, I'm particularly interested in measuring endogenously expressed compounds rather than drug additions to a patient. So I, I often do think we're going to see analyte de degradation as synthesis and enzymatic activity continues. <coughs> So in this presentation, I'm going to talk about two um, novel approaches for quantitative microsampling, one being a, a, a device made by Shimadzu called the microsampling wing, and a, another uh, device made by a company called Novolytic, which partners with Shimadzu Scientific, and this was Noviplex and plasma prep cards. I'm sure a lot of people in the audience have looked into these. There's some commonalities between these two approaches. They both take um, direct blood sampling from an unmeasured prick. They create an exact volume that's quantitative um, of plasma. They're reproducible and easy to use. And I do believe these devices to be incredibly quantitative. All sounds great. The other commonality is they're incredibly expensive. And I think that when we look at these techniques and approaches, we can't get something for nothing. There's always a trade-off. And in this case, it's the great expense. There are some differences. I really like the Noviplex card that includes a metabolic arrest mechanism to quench um, enzymatic activity. I said in the previous slide this was very important. This is size exclusion of drying of the sample. And this means that Noviplex cards can be stored and transported at relatively ambient conditions to get away from this problem of shipping things on dry ice that we mentioned earlier. Uh, the uh, MS2W is a high volume with built-in sample replication. I really like this. I'm going to talk about this in a little while. And uh, MS, uh, MS2W is a refinement of common techniques. And the common techniques I'm talking about when I say this microsampling wing replaces is this historic capillary microsampling, which I'm sure some people in the audience are familiar with. This is where we take a, a, a hemocrit glass tube, plug it with wax after we've taken the sample, centrifuge, snap the tube. 
and take this aliquot of plasma over for quantitation. We surveyed a lot of um, people using this technique and there was a lot of feedback from end users that training was required and there was a lot of variability depending on how you were trained in the technique. Labeling of the capillary is incredibly difficult because these tubes are very thin. <laughs> While centrifuging, things are often broken and there was a general dislike for glass. I do understand that there are plastic alternatives available to this. I only found that out today. So this is why a, a new uh, handy device was developed, the micro sampling wing. And let's just take a zoom in of this. So the micro sampling wing is made of a hard polycarbonate plastic, which is sterilized um, before use. And we have capillary action where the, uh, where the blood can be drawn in. So I'll, I'm going to take you through the process in a little while. And then we can snap off different portions of the of the plasma when it's been um, uh, um, when the plasma's been made and we can take this off for different analysis. So the lining of these tubes are coated with um, EDTA so we can we can uh, get, get the plasma out. What's really nice about this technique is it gives us all of these different options and possibilities um, on our on our micro sample. For example, we have this first section which can either be analysed as a whole and give us a rather large 5.6 microliter volume of plasma, exact. We can snap that in half and have two replicates, maybe one as a backup. We have a second section which contains the same plasma. We can send, we could maybe keep this for next analysis or we could combine all three of these parts and have a relatively large volume. <clears throat> Let me show you the procedure. We start off with our little device here. I'm sure this is familiar to everyone. We do the, the, the skin prick. And by capillary action, we put our, our micro sampling wing on the blood spot, and whole blood is drawn up <coughs> through the device, overfilling the loop. So this is a non exact volume. We put the device into a centrifuge. I'm going to talk a little bit more about this as we go on. And then after centrifugation, and the, remember this is also coated in the EDTA, we get our, our plasma sections here, which we can snap off and use in these various configurations. We then take these tubes and put them into our Eppendorf. We put in our organic solvent. We knock out the proteins. We take these over for LCMS analysis. My preference here is to use something that um, Rhonda talked about, the supported liquid-liquid extraction to do to remove the phospholipids before I inject these onto my LCMS. So why is it called M micro sampling wing squared? Japanese company, so we come up with some interesting names. I have to live with that. We, this, this system comes in two parts. The wing itself and then the micro sampling windmill which is this customized rotor for putting many of these um, devices into your centrifuge and centrifuging everything in one go. The windmill also doubles as um, a storage device um, for, for samples prior to analysis. It's interesting, you do not need to use the windmill. You can use a conventional centrifuge, um, but this is a very neat way of doing it. And of course, we've done some reproducibility studies on here compared to micro pipettes, and we find we get very nice reproducibility and comparative results to a micro pipette. We can take this data on to, so, to do some sort of pharmacokinetic um, plots, and we find we get very nice usable data from the way the micro sample's taken. So, I find this technique to be reproducible. The feedback we get is that it's easy to use. From the data I've just shown, we believe it to be highly quantitative. It's worth mentioning that this was initially aimed at pharmaceutical animal studies, so cost was a secondary importance, and it contributed to this um, three R's 
of reduction, replacement, and refinement of taking the sample from the animal. It can also be used in human studies as well. Looks like I'm boring everyone to death. <laughs> so I'll move on uh, to the next topic. Oh, pardon me. And there's also going to be this larger volume um, versions in the pipeline. Because we believe, as the two previous presenters have said, sensitivity is of paramount importance to these studies. And really, the more sample we can get with the least um, exposure for the patient, the, more, the better we can make our analytical techniques. That ends the micro sampling wing. And I'm now going to move on to these Noviplex cards. I really like the idea of the Noviplex cards. I think they are incredible. Because in the case of the previous device I showed you, the metabolic arrest or the quenching of the enzymatic activity is done by temperature. We take our samples, we have to put them in a fridge or a freezer, and then we have all of these problems of transporting the samples from A to B. The Noviplex cars does this enzymatic quenching by size exclusion, followed by drying of the sample. This makes the cards much easier to transport than the previous device. And it means there's no equipment needed at the collection site, like a centrifuge. And listening to the talks this morning from Papua New Guinea, having a centrifuge on site would almost certainly not work out. So this is what the Noviplex cards look like. Uh, conventional looking, I would say. And we have a test area where we can place the dried blood spot. And of course, we take um, an unmeasured whole blood, which is deposited onto the card. I'm going to talk about the process in a little while. But uh, an absolute volumetric cons uh, um, volume of plasma is delivered onto a disc, which then dries out. This has some advantages. The enzymatic activity is quenched by the drying process. <coughs> And this is what these cards look like. They are an advancement on the paper-based cards where there are multi-layers. I'm going to take you through each one of these layers one by one in a moment. But I think it's fair to say that we put the, the blood on. We have something that um, helps spread out the sample. We have a membrane which does size exclusion, which keeps out our proteins. And we can have our um, smaller molecules deposited onto this uh, volumetric disc, which we can then dry. And of course, this is really geared up towards mass spectrometry on the back end for quantitating the compounds on the disk. So we take um, a drop of blood from a finger stick. And the first layer that it meets on this card is a spreading layer to spread this sample out before it goes on to a more porous layer which is our filtration layer. And this is where we get some um, size separation occurring with our undesirable proteins um, staying at the top of the card, not making it through. We then have this important collection layer, which is the disk that we take on uh, for further analysis later on. And if this was just um, a paper card we would get some wicking of the sample coming through from the bottom of the card. So we have to put this hydrophobic layer on there so we can keep our sample uh, not wicking away. We then uh, delaminate these layers. We can just rip them apart with our fingers. Uh, this to be thrown away. And then this disc... Um, pops out. Remember, that's a, a volumetric 2.5 microliters. And this disk can then be put into a, an Eppendorf. Organic solvent added to get the sample off of the um, collection <coughs> paper and into solution. <coughs> 
which can be taken on for a spec. And of course, there's been many studies where people com have compared um, liquid liquid extraction, so traditional extraction techniques of a large volume of plasma to this micro sampling device. And uh, this is a compound that's of interest to everybody endogenous 25 uh, hydroxy vitamin D3. We get a high correlation between our traditional large volume process and our uh, novel micro sampling with slightly higher RSDs, but at 4.5%, 5% is still within the acceptable range for most people. I've really rushed through this, I'm sorry. <laughs> so I think that this is a fantastic replacement of historic paper cards. I believe it to be incredibly quantitative and very reproducible and definitely addresses some of the storage and transportation problems associated with a liquid plasma sample. Thank you for listening. I had to take the opportunity, though, just to mention one more thing. Earlier on in Rhonda's talk, she mentioned um, a clinical mass spec analyzer. Um, and she said it was the first in the world that could have a, um, uh, a clinical analyzer linked to a mass spec. Um, Shimadzu have had one of these in, on the market for the last 18 months. And we've installed over 100 of these around the world where you can put um, whole blood samples or urines and take it all the way through to your mass spec. Thank you for listening. Cheers.